Hi, welcome to May Love and part two of our deep guide to retinoids. Today, we'll show you what changes take place at the molecular and cellular levels when you start using retinoids in the skin. This 2017 paper by Xiao and colleagues examined the impact of treating skin with a 0.4% retinol for seven days. Let's go through it in detail one step at a time. If you're new here, my name is Jackie and I'm the CEO and Chief Product Obsessor here at May Love. As usual, the full write-up of this video is available by clicking on the link below. This study by Xiao and colleagues was conducted in vivo, which in this case means in living humans. This is in contrast to in vitro, which means in a test tube or culture dish outside the living organism. The study was carried out at the University of Michigan and involved individuals with an average age of 76 years old as the test subjects. The researchers conducted a controlled experiment with the aim of isolating the impact of a specific variable, which in this case was the effect of the retinoid on the skin. To do so, the researchers created two identical topical formulas that differed in just one regard. One formula contained 0.4% retinol, and the other contained 0% retinol. The one containing no retinol is referred to as a control vehicle or just vehicle. Basically, you can think of this experiment as a competition between retinol and no retinol to see which delivers more skin benefits. That's why you're going to see a lot of side-by-side -side images like this. What you're seeing is not a before and after. Rather, they showcase a comparison between two distinct treatments, one that incorporates retinol and another one without it, the control vehicle, which we will refer to as no retinol. Okay. Now let's get into it. These images are from skin samples obtained by punch biopsies after seven days of treatments. And the skin samples were specifically dyed to highlight specific parts the researchers wanted to compare, which is why you will see these vivid shades of pink and blue. Figure one, part A, shows skin tissue that went under what's called H&E staining, which stands for hematoxylin and eosin staining. And what you see is noticeable improvement in the thickness of the epidermis after seven days of retinal treatment. In 1B, the bar graph shows the improvement in skin thickness in micrometers. And you can see that the epidermal thickness was on average 2.1 times thicker with retinol compared to the control vehicle, which is great as skin thins as you age, which makes it more prone to injury. In 1C, Xiao and colleagues stained the skin samples for KI67 protein. KI67 is often used as a marker for measuring the degree of cell proliferation, which means a cell's growth and then division into two new cells. Basically, more KI67 means more cell generation activities, and you can easily see there's much more KI67 staining with retinol compared to no retinol. In fact, Xiao and colleagues observed that retinal treatment resulted in 12 times the amount of KI67 positive cells in the epidermis and also much more KI67 positive cells in the dermis with retinol versus none in the control. This is unmistakable proof that retinol is empowering more skin cells to be created, which is great because thicker skin helps to protect your skin from potential damage. Interestingly, among the cells that retinoids help generate in the skin are endothelial cells, which comprise of blood vessels. So in 1G, Xiao and colleagues stained the skin tissue specifically for endothelial cells. And as you can see, there is a lot more with retinol. And indeed, increased blood vessels and improved blood flow to the skin is one of the major benefits of topical retinoids. In 1H, the researchers quantified this angiogenesis or formation of new blood vessels, which shows a whopping 3.8 fold increase with retinol. So the conclusion from figure one is that topical retinol powers new skin cells and blood vessel formation, which leads to thicker skin as well as better blood flow to the skin. Now let's move on to figure two. This time, Xiao and colleagues stained the skin samples for type one procollagen, fibronectin, and tropolastin. Basically, these are proteins that give firmness to your skin. And these proteins dramatically decline in amount as you age, leading to wrinkles and sagging skin. So increasing these proteins are the key to combating fine lines and wrinkles and giving your skin elasticity and that bounciness. Now, let's break down this figure piece by piece. 
In figure 2a, you can see staining for type 1 procollagen, and it is clear that there is much more procollagen being produced in the retinal treated skin. In fact, it was three times as much. More procollagen means more collagen. I highly recommend that you watch our deep guide to collagen video for background information. I'll put a link below in the description box. Type 1 collagen is a primary protein that gives your skin its structure, like tent poles for a tent. And this is what collagen fibers look like under an electron microscope. Next, in figure 2C, they quantified the increase in fibronectin. This is a protein we don't talk about as much, but it is an important supporting player. It is what's called a glycoprotein that binds to other proteins, including collagen, to help provide adhesion and structure. And here you can see fibronectin content is also increased by retinal treatment. In figure 2E, Xiao and colleagues stain for trophallastin, which is a precursor to elastin, like procollagen is a precursor to collagen. Elastin is a stretchy protein, it's like lycra in your leggings. In the skin, elastin is what gives your skin that bounciness. And this is what elastin looks like under a microscope. It's like stretchy netting wrapped around collagen fibers. Xiao and colleagues found that retinal treatment increased tropoelastin content by four times compared to no retinal. Again, this is a very impressive improvement given only one week of treatment. So the conclusion from figure two is that retinal increases the amount of procollagen, fibronectin, and tropoelastin. And if you have more of these important proteins, they'll help keep your skin firmer and bouncier. Now, let's move on to figure five of the study. This figure features images taken using atomic force microscopy. With atomic force microscopy, you can get resolution on the order of fractions of a nanometer. How long is a nanometer? As a comparison, a sheet of printer paper is about 100,000 nanometers thick. So we're looking at some extreme close-ups here. Here are zoomed in images of collagen fibers from extracted skin samples. Keep in mind that in this Xiao and colleagues study, average age of test subjects were 76 years old. As you age, the collagen fibers become much more prone to getting broken down and chewed up. And you can see that in the left side image here. The fibers look kind of degraded and mangled. Contrast that to the image on the right, which is treated with retinol. You can see those intact, long, healthy fibers of collagen. In figure 5b, Xiao and colleagues visualize these same images in 3D. And again, you can see just how much more smooth and intact the collagen fibers are, where the skin received retinal treatment. So you saw earlier that retinal increases pro-collagen production. Pro-collagen is a starting building block that eventually becomes mature and intact woven fibers of collagen. As skin ages, pro-collagen production decreases, and not only that, the collagen fibers you already have start becoming degraded. And in figure five, we saw that with retinal treatment, you can better produce and maintain your deposits of mature and intact collagen fibers. And as you already know, more collagen means less wrinkles. We hope that you enjoyed this discussion of Xiao and colleagues research. Note that these noticeable improvements at the molecular and cellular level occurred after just seven days of treatment with the 0.4% retinal serum. We know from clinical studies that it may take eight weeks for these microstructural changes to translate into visible improvement. However, if you could go inside your cells, you'd be able to see that the benefits are occurring very soon after you start the treatment. So make sure to use your retinoids consistently and be patient because a real secret ingredient to maintaining great skin long-term is consistency and sticking to a good routine. Thanks for watching and that's it for today's video, the part two of Deep Guide to Retinoids. Next time in part three, we're going to try to answer the question, which retinoid is best, retinol, retinal, or tretinoin? If you like this type of content, make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to check the links below for related content. Thanks and see you again soon.